As you can probably notice from my previous videos on a pen router build, I've had trouble with the dust control. So I prototyped these two dust hoods out of pine. And I made these by removing material until it fits. One is supposed to be removable and the other one is supposed to be stationary. So the one at the back goes on like so. And there's a bolt at the front to secure it down. And the one at the front goes on like so. This one is supposed to be removable. And they all get clamped down by the weight of the router. But, but I really think I can do a much better job on these since these are only prototypes. And because the one that's supposed to be removable is actually quite hard to remove because there's a tab at the bottom that stops it from being taken out. So I'm going to give this a second shot and see how I go. For the back cover I'm gluing up several pieces of plywood so that I can avoid most of the carving and I'm also going to extend this tab here to fill up the entire area here so that I don't need this tab at the front cover which is stopping it from being removable. For the front cover I can't really use the same trick because one piece of plywood isn't thick enough for even one layer so I'll just have to do it the hard way. Now to get the piece of wood to fit in the recess, you can't exactly put it over and trace it with a lead pencil. So this is where the piece of paper comes in. And then we have some really clear contours of where it is. And it kind of transfers to the back, I'm not sure whether you can see on camera, but there's kind of fold marks here and there that I can use as references. And by drawing really hard on a piece of paper, you get some pencil marks on a workpiece. And now I can cut out the shape using a bandsaw and making sure I stay well out of the line because the piece of paper might introduce a little bit of distortion when folding that. After quite a bit of sanding I finally got this to fit really nicely and it can be held on friction against gravity. And now I just need to mark out the hole in the middle. After some more sanding, I've got it flush with the inner wall and I guess this was actually designed for some kind of dust hood of some sort but when I bought the router, I never saw any dust collection accessories Right now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to try out this mounting hole because this is actually held on just fine with just friction alone However, it is slightly too thick because this distance is supposed to be 8mm So I'm using the table saw to bring down the thickness after much sculpting, I've got this to fit very nicely. And it just gets clamped down by the router itself. So now I'm going to move on to making the front cover, which I think is the hardest part. So from the prototype, I learned the ugly way to actually drill the hole first, or else you'll get a sore thumb like this. And I know that I want my workpiece to reference off this face. So I want the marine ply to actually rest on this face and then the edge to rest on this face right here and I want the hole to exit around about here so I can just roughly measure that and it seems to be around about 19 so I can mark that on the workpiece and I also know that I want it to be roughly centered so 118 point so this is where I want my angled hole to exit. But here comes the twist. I actually want the lower half of the hole to exit with a smaller drill bit so that I can actually shape that to fan out like so and making it a little bit more efficient. So that's gonna add quite a bit of challenge to this front cover. So this is how it's gonna go down. 
this recess is going to fit in like so and then I'm going to drill a 20 millimeter hole from this side like this and then another 35 millimeter from the other side like so and then kind of fan the hole out from here. To help start the drill bit, I'm sending a corresponding bevel. And then I can rejig the workpiece for the other hole. I can't exactly use the belt sander to sand an angle for this one, so I'm using my chisels to carve it out. That came out much better than expected, so now I'm going to carve a smooth transition here and also fan this out. I don't have any carving chisels and my regular chisels need serious sharpening, but they do just fine. Ah, it almost feels like making the wooden watches again, those good old days. After so much sanding and carving, I finally got a smooth transition inside and also a nice sweep on the outside here. And now I'm going to trace it out so that it matches the back cover. To help make shaping this piece a little bit easier, I'm going to take out this pin right here so that I only have these two extrusions to worry about. Well, I actually only have one extrusion to worry about because I already made a cutout for this one. So I'll use the other one for securing this one down. And I already can see that I need to cut away more material here because there's a gap right here. Since there's a big chamfer right here, I don't want to go full depth or else I might break out the other side. I'm using my chisels to create the corresponding chamfer and then using a drill bit to mark out a mounting hole. Now for the bolt, I really want to use one that has a head like this one, which is much friendlier for my hands, but unfortunately it isn't long enough and this is the only one I've got. So I'm going to use a longer bolt and then modify this head to fit this longer bolt. I am using the belt center to make the head of the box square and then drilling a hole slightly smaller than the square. So now I'm going to make clearance for this pin right here. It seems to fit quite nicely, so now I'm going to do a little bit more sanding to make it look better. I know that I still have the shroud to make, but I want to take the opportunity to varnish everything first because I'm going to make the shroud out of metal and plastic. Which means it's that time to take the entire machine apart. Hooray, now I can start the long process of sanding. I so look forward to this. Well, 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 it's finally this day that I put on the varnish on this machine. I've got the machine put back together and I've also carried it back to my high school and let me tell you, it isn't exactly light. It is almost finished except for the dust strap to go over the router over there. I'm in the process of making it and I think I'm going to include that in the next video because that one was really eventful.